Hey everybody, how you doing? It's your girl Bunny. It's the CBS All Access Original Series, Star Trek Picard, Season 1, Episode 7, entitled Nepenthe. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? And for those of you who are new to the channel, welcome. Kick your feet up as I recap the entire episode with photos offset to the side, and I put my predictions for the rest of the season and predictions that I've gotten right so far in the comments. That's all coming up next. It's Bunny. <laughs> Opening scene, we are taken back three weeks ago to the Daystrom Institute at the moment where Agnes is sitting, enjoying her lunch, listening to music before she's interrupted by Commodore O. So that lets us know how long they've been on this mission, almost a month. So as she's interrupted, Commodore O wants to know, what is it that Picard's questioning? He's asking you about this, he's asking you about that. And Agnes really has this question and this energy of, am I in trouble? Is there something that I've done? And she says, no, we really want you to get involved and to see what he's doing, but to keep a low profile and just kind of monitor what's going on. Because if you don't, his search and all of his questions pertaining to synthetics and whatever that he's doing will lead to destruction. And she goes to share telepathically these visions of destruction and explosions and all of these bad things. And it affects Agnes so much to the point to where she vomits and she's overwhelmed. And Commodore O says, we need you to go with Picard on whatever missions or whatever things that he's doing to keep an eye on him, but we'll need you to take this tracking device. And she has it to her, but she says that you have to chew it and you have to swallow it. With a little bit of resistance, Agnes places it in her mouth, chews it, and swallows it. So now she has the tracking device from Commodore O as she goes on to watch and monitor what Picard is doing. We see dual shots of the crew. They are being held and their ship is being held by Romulans, but there's no way that they can shake out of this capture. And they're trying to figure out, wow, what's going on? We can't even escape, but we've got to find a way to escape. On the cube, we see Hugh and Rizzo. She is questioning him, trying to figure out where Picard and where the synthetic have gone, but he is very tight lipped and she's trying to think of a way to get the answers that she needs but she keeps in mind that Hugh is protected by the Federation and this treaty and the research that he's doing so she's really conflicted about how to get her answers. Agnes on the ship she's questioning why can't we just be honest with them and tell them the situation? He's gone and honestly, they just want Picard and the synthetic. They don't want us, so why don't we just say that? And quickly, we see that Rafi and we see that the captain, they're looking at each other like, hmm, why all of a sudden this change of heart? Why is she saying that just, just to let them go? But they notice that she's in a panic and just saying, why don't we just tell them the truth? And we've got to go. So that's a red flag to them that, hmm, why the change of heart all of a sudden? The Romulans then release the ship without any argument, without too much going back and forth, not any conversations, they just let them go. And Rafi takes note of that. She says, wow, you know, they were once holding our ship and then they just release us and let us go. It feels like a trick. It feels like they want us to calm and they want us to feel a certain type of way and they've just released the ship. Let's just take note of that and keep a close eye on possible things that they could be doing. Elnor communicates with the ship that I know that you guys are trying to bring us back on, but we're wasting time, we're surrounded. I'll stay here with you. I promised Picard that I would protect everyone and I can't just leave him here on this ship by himself. So they take note of that and Elnor is with Hugh as they are constantly questioned by Rizzo and where Picard has gone. 
after the opening credits. We see Picard and Soji, they are now on Nepethe, and they are walking along, but quickly approached by a young girl who seems to have tribal markings on her face, and she is capturing them, per se, to see who they are and what do they want. And Picard raises his hand, and Soji raises their hands in sort of this submissive gesture. And when we think that they're in some type of danger, Picard says to the young girl, are we safe here, Kestra? And we notice that he knows who the girl is. She puts her bowl down and she goes into this mode of being a young girl like, huh, yeah, mm, you're safe. And she's kind of guiding them to a location. So we already know that he knows who the girl is. And just like a young girl, she's asking a lot of questions. So what are you looking for now? What's going on now? Um, are you on some sort of mission? Are you a synthetic? And she's just going on and on as a young girl would, a curious young girl at that. As they approach their destination, we see that there is a small house and who do we see? We see Miss Deanna Troy. And as a Trekkie, you are very excited to see her face and Picard and her, they share a moment where they hug, an endearing hug at that. But Soji seems kind of offset to the side and we can tell that her trust barrier, barrier is broken. She doesn't seem comfortable and she's trying to assess not only who are these new people, but should I even trust Picard at that? After Deanna and Picard share a moment, Picard goes further into the house and we see someone that looks quite familiar. They're at the counter preparing lunch or dinner and we hear the soft tone of Picard's voice say, hello, Will. And as a Trekkie, we see him turn around and we see Will, Mr. Riker. And of course, you know, as Picard would say, number one. <laughs> and he turns around and they share that endearing hug. And we're just so excited to see these two characters again together again on the screen and together again sharing that energy and that emotion. But of course, Will, he takes his training and his mind of what's going on and he calls to the computer to go ahead and have the protective shields up, make sure to check all of the barriers because he's no fool. He has an idea that if Picard is there after this long extensive period of time that clearly there's something going on and they need protection. Deanna wants to make sure that she communicates to Picard. You've got to rest. You're fatigued. You're very tired. You may not admit that there's something going on, but you need to rest. And along with resting and eating dinner, you need to understand that you can stay here for as long as you like. You know that we're more than willing to help you to find out what's going on, but you need to get your rest. That is so important. We see Soji, she's outside, she's taking a shower, and of course, Kestra, she's asking a lot of questions a mile a minute. Do you run? Do you kiss? Um, um, have you done this? Have you done that? And she also says, wow, it's just like data to create a synthetic that mimics something human. That's just very interesting. And at first, Soji has this, this timid, I don't wanna talk to this person energy, but she's starting to bond a little bit more Although being hesitant, having this tit for tap kind of girl talk and she allows the conversation to continue. But you can still tell that Soji is not so inviting. She doesn't even know if she should feel safe. Picard is walking around their home and he's looking at furniture and he's viewing photos and we see Picard look at a photo of his younger self holding a young baby boy and Deanna says he would have been 18 at this moment and I can't believe all that that time has passed. And Picard said, that must have been really difficult for you and I know it was to just see that happen. And she makes sure to tell him in a way without seeming 
too pushy and she says Picard I know that I've said that you could stay here for as long as you like but please keep in mind that even though we're willing to help I'm really really concerned about Kestro like I'm really concerned for her safety and I don't know what I would do if I were to lose her too and Picard says of course you know I I understand that you've lost one and and you don't want to lose another and that's really important to me and they don't go too deep into the sun just yet but we do learn that his name is Thad and that he was their son and that they have one remaining daughter and Picard says I'll do any and everything that I can to get rest to get information that I need but of course yes the safety of everyone right now is really important after a little while of traveling, they then notice that they are being tailed still by a Romulan ship. And Rafi says, that's just, that's crazy that we've done all of this maneuvering and they're still tracking us. Is there any way to maneuver or go around? And Captain says, I've tried everything and it's just really strange that they're still telling us, but I don't know what it is that we can do. And Rafi says, well, we've got to figure out something. They're telling us and they're telling us and we still can't shake them. As they're discussing that, still Agnes is in her moment of panic and saying, why can't we just tell the, tell the truth? I wanna go home. This is something that I don't want. I thought that I wanted to be here. Space is just this weird place. And she's starting to panic and really, really freak out. And Rafi says, you know, it's really interesting how you was just so into just wanting to be on this voyage and you know so much about synthetics and how you're so helpful, almost to the point where you convinced Picard and now all of a sudden you wanna go home? We've come so close and you're freaking out and you wanna go home. I, I just find that really interesting. And Agnes is on the verge of tears and looks like she's about to have just a mental breakdown. And Rafi and the captain, they share eye contact and saying like, whoa, this is something deeper than maybe we thought that it was. But it's that endearing question and that endearing curiosity. They don't sense any sort of deceit from Agnes. And Rafi says, okay, it's all right. Let's just, let's just take a moment. Let's just go downstairs let's have some ice cream let's have some coffee let's talk it out everything will be okay will he knows picard and he wants to know why are you running what are you running from and picard doesn't want him to get involved he tells him you know i don't want you to get involved your safety is really important to me i'm thinking about your family and will says that's all great but I know you, let me put the pieces together from what I can assess so far. Okay, you're running and you're running with someone. Knowing you, it's not because you're running specifically, you're trying to help someone because that's what you do. And thinking of all of the circumstances you have as synthetic, you have this Romulan-esque energy, which could be Tosh Liar, you have uh, am I on the right track? And Picard gives this smirk and, you know, thinking like, wow, of course, this is number one. He's, he's not an idiot. He's not a fool. And he says, yeah, I can just tell knowing you, all of the secrets, the things that you're trying to maneuver, it has to involve those things. Deanna, Soji, and her daughter, they are picking tomatoes. They're having a moment preparing for dinner. And Soji is very offset to herself. And she looks as if steam is coming from her ears because she's so uncomfortable with not only what she's learned, but the people that are around her. She can't trust anyone. And Deanna asks her daughter, you know, I need a moment to speak with Soji. And as she's speaking with her, she says, a tomato have you seen a tomato before and soji just reiterates that no it's just it's it's just odd to me because i've never had anything that wasn't replicated food and deanna says just bite into it taste it and as she's tasting the tomato she's pleased about what she's tasting and the realness of it all the juice and that it's come from the earth but as quickly as she enjoys that little moment, Soji is disconnected again. And she tells her, you know, Thad was born and raised on starships and he had menadesic neurosclerosis. 
And with the ban on synthetics, unfortunately, there was nothing that we can do. So you see, Soji, real isn't always better. And Soji is taken back that she knows that she's synthetic and, and it makes her uncomfortable. But Deanna's point is that you're, you have this desire and this craving to be human, but yet I lost my son. And just because he was synthetic didn't mean that he was just destined to have this great life and things just to fall into place for him. And so she says, you know, I just can't trust anybody. I don't know if I can trust you. I don't know if I can trust anybody. And the moment that I had just an opportunity to trust someone, it was Narek and he was Romulan. And I thought that we were really bonding. Come, coming to find out that he did all of that just to get information from me. He did all of that for a purpose and he could have cared less about me. He knew that I wasn't real. He had an idea about who the real me was and now I'm just supposed to trust everyone around me? I just can't, it's, it's a lot. And Deanna says, I understand that you've been through a lot and I don't take that lightly at all. But Picard is one of those people that you can trust. He's not out to get anything from you. He's not requesting anything. And I can make a good guess that everything that he's doing is to help you. So just try to understand that you can trust him. Picard hears them talking and he says, yes, you can trust me. It's something that I believe that you should do. And Soji's not trying to hear that. And she reacts like a typical teenager. She pushes Picard and Will says, hey, because he's insulted that he's pushed him. And Picard is just taken back like, whoa, like she reacted like a teenager. You know, I, I kind of deserve that. And Will says, well, yeah, but that's no reason to disrespect her. And Deanna just empathizes and says that, yes, yeah, she's reacting like a teenager and we must communicate with her and understand what she's been through. She's been through a lot. She's learned that she's a synthetic. She's learned that her existence has only lasted really for so long. She's been lied to. Look at everything that she's been through. And for someone to just casually say, trust me, isn't easy. So Picard, what I need you to do, I need you to be Jean-Luc. I need you to pretend as if when we go in here, we have dinner, that dinner table, I need you to treat that like the ready room on the Enterprise. Enterprise. And Picard takes note of that and he knows what he has to do. Hugh and Elnor, they've got to get back to the queen cell room. They've got to get back to that location so they can tell and get out of there. But unfortunately, Rizzo hears this conversation and she lets Hugh know that you've got to give me what I want. You're either gonna give it to me the hard way or you can just tell me what's going on. You can tell me where Picard and the synthetic are located, but of course he's not budging. He's not gonna tell her anything. And Rizzo goes to her way of doing things. She holds, you know, him captive. She holds a knife to his, his throat. He's still not giving her the information that she needs. And she reminds Hugh that because of you, they're going to die. And she's talking about the Borg that are around them. She's talking about the staff, the people that he cares for and the people that he knows. And she's sick of it. She's tried, tired of trying to dig out answers from Hugh. And she gives the command to kill them all. And one by one, Hugh is watching all of the people that he cares for die. And she tells him, you're gonna give me this information some way, somehow. And Hugh is so distraught and in tears about he what has just happened and he's lost so many people who he loves. And then we see Elnor, he comes into play and he wants to stop this all. They go into a battle, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And unfortunately, with Hugh trying to get out of the way, he is stabbed in the neck. And unfortunately, Hugh doesn't make it, but Elnor tells him that I tried my best to help you and defend you. And Hugh says, I know, but you've got to get back to that room. You've got to get out of here and you've got to get back to the rest of your crew, to the rest of your people. I'm happy that I did what I thought that I could do to help my place, my statement, who I am. I did the best that I could 
I could to help not only the boards, but Picard and everyone. So don't pity, just do what you've got to do to get away. But thank you for trying to help me and thank you for trying to save my life. Rafi, she tries to comfort Agnes by giving her cake and milk and saying that, you know, you were just so amped up to come with us on this mission. And now you're saying something completely different. And what's going on with you? And Agnes holds her mouth in restraint, trying to hold back tears. And it is coming from her gut with pain. And Rafi says, oh, my goodness, I, I don't know what I was thinking. Here I am trying to dig for this information and why you've changed all of a sudden. And I didn't think about Bruce. I didn't think about you just lost somebody that you deeply cared for. And I'm sorry about that. I, I wasn't thinking. And Agnes is taken back because she's conflicted with what she's done and the true reasoning of why, why she's there with them in the first place. She's really not there to help with how they think she's there to help because of course from the beginning of the episode we know her true intentions of her being on this mission and as they're talking about that rio says hey they've come back we've tried to shake them again but they're on our tail again and rafi says that's impossible they are still tracking us how are they allowed to do that and we see the anguish in agnes and she continues to just get deep deep into her seat again to the point to where she starts to vomit but the vomit is red and Rio says is that blood and Rafi is just like no it's it's red velvet cake at dinner Picard again tries to come now from a more comforting perspective with Soji and he says everything that's happened I can't even begin to understand where you're coming from but please notice my pupils notice my heart rate notice everything that's going on with my body can't you tell from that that I'm not coming from an area of deceit distrust trying to get something from you I'm really trying to help I really want to help you and Soji is still adamant in saying that I can't trust anybody. You could just be telling me all of those comforting things to get me where you want me to go or information that you're trying to get. The same thing that happened to me on the cube. It's the same pattern. Why should I trust you? And Picard is just really adamant and being sincere. And you could tell that Will is starting to have that energy of being defensive and saying like, I can't believe that this person can't trust Picard, but Picard is giving that hand nudge like, well, number one, <laughs> calm. You know, he's trying to take control of what they're doing and the essence of what they're doing. And he says that I don't want anything from you. And the reason why I have you with me is because you mentioned that there were some things that you shared with Narek in, in, in a ritual and him getting out the visions and things that were placed into your mind for a reason. You were meant to remember those things. And she goes on to explain that the things that she saw, she was in a room and she was on a planet that had two red moons and there was lots of thunder. And Picard says, we've got to go back there. It's obvious that there are some things that are there that you need to know and in actuality this is home for you this is the thing that you remembered and it's really important that we figure out some things about your home home is important and of course Deanna she says yes you know my son he created all of these languages and things that he would do because that was a place of home for him he wanted to create things that meant a lot to him and to where he had this sort of connection and Picard says as soon as we do research we need to do more research research first to even figure out what seems similar to your vision what planet has these these moons and what planet has this thunder we need to know all of this but we have to keep researching and that's just something I don't know right now so it's not like we can just take off and find out where it is and will coming from an idea of interpretation and reality and saying that this is great I understand that you want to go there but unfortunately I have bad news that she's told this information to a Romulan that was asking her all of these questions. So they're way ahead of us in research and trying to figure out this planet. And also, even if we do get there, if you do get to the planet, 
now you're in danger. Now that they could be there and, and they have maybe some people on that planet that are lookouts and all this stuff. He's like, we, we got to consider that too. And of course, their insightful daughter and her being this curious person says, well, it's not anything that we have to research any further because this planet is, is on the Hulin system. And it's not a name. This planet is a number. And the entire table, table is impressed by her and, and saying, wow, this, this very smart young girl. And it gives the nudge and the energy to the audience and to all of the characters that, man, maybe the Romulans don't have a head start. Maybe we do because we have information that they don't have. And they probably, probably don't even know that the planet doesn't have a name but a number. Rios, he speaks with Agnes and he says, you know what? I really think it's strange that no matter what maneuvers we do with the ship and no matter where we go, that this Romulan ship is able to catch up with this. Don't, don't you think that's strange? And Agnes is frozen in her guilt state, trying not to have too much contact and eye contact and movement because of course she's still super guilty about why she's there in the first place. And he says, I really think that Rafi has a tracking device and she's helping someone with our location. Because think about it, she came back from this planet, she was in her state, you know, feeling how she was feeling, and now all of a sudden, you, you, you know, you leave from the ship and you come back and now all of a sudden they're, they're tracking us? Something's not right, I really think it's her. And Agnes, once again, has this look of, oh no, now he's beginning to suspect that it's Rafi. And he says, I think we need to keep a close eye on her and I'm gonna question her and I'm gonna figure out this tracking thing, but I, I really think that it's her. And he gets up to leave the room and Agnes, she's so dumbfounded with guilt and the situation that she goes to the medical area and she requests for a device to do something to her medically. She holds it up to her neck and it does so much so that it causes her to go into a seizure. And of course we have the hospitality hologram that shows up and says, oh crap, like what are you doing? And she's shaking and convulsing and the hologram is trying to figure out what is going on. Rios goes to speak with Rafi and says, you know, it's just really odd how they're tracking us everywhere that we go. Don't you think that's interesting? And Rafi isn't paying it any mind. She's just trying to do research and think like, man, I know that's strange. And he's giving her this look like, mm, I've got my eye on you. And as soon as he starts to go into asking her more questions, they do hear the alert. And as he's thinking, he's alerted into by the hospitality hologram and saying that Agnes is now in this coma. And Rios is like, what? How is he? How is, how is she in a coma? And of course he rushes to go see what is going on with her. Now, Will and Picard, they're walking along and they're talking. And he says to Picard, you know, when you went into retirement, I found that hard to believe because you are meant for missions. You are meant to help people. You're meant to, to seek and do more things. So I, that whole retirement thing and what's going on with you, keep in mind that that is your destiny to be, to be Jean-Luc Picard, to, to go above and beyond and trying to research and, and seeing what's going on. And I really hope and I really want you to find what you're looking for. And I really want you to understand that we're always here to help no matter what. Don't, don't ever think that we're not in your corner. And we know from that energy that they have to leave soon because they're getting to the point now where they have the information that they need and Picard doesn't want to put the family in any further danger, so they have to go. Now that Picard has locked in and now that they, the ship knows their location, they have to leave. And not only do they gotta leave, but they gotta leave ASAP. So once they're in that area, Soji and Picard, they're preparing to leave. And of course, we have the young girl that has a moment with Soji and she says that I don't want you to feel some sort of way because you're a synthetic you're amazing 
Um, I always think about you. I'm going to miss you. And with an endearing gift, she gives her a compass, which was seen earlier in the episode that the young girl was using. She wasn't using technology. She wasn't using all of these things, just a simple compass that might potentially be broken. But she wants to give that to Soji to say, hey, here is something for me to you that you trust with me. I have my parents. I have the ability to search and, and to have fun and enjoy my life as a young girl. And you have that as well. You have Picard. So I need you to trust him. And Soji takes that under consideration. They share a hug. Picard beams for them to go back to the ship. And of course we see Will, Deanna, and their young girl see them beam to leave the planet, to leave what they know might be a long time before they see Picard again. And that is the end of the episode. Make sure to come back next week for episode eight. What did you think? Make sure to check out the comments for my predictions for the rest of the season and for me to brush my shoulders off with some predictions that were correct for episodes one through seven. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And I don't know if you noticed, but I subscribe to whomever subscribes to me. Also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E and click that notification bell so you don't miss any post check out the playlist to check out other shows and movie reviews and let me know what you think until next time i'll see you next time bye <laughs>